I had warned people back in March that the supposedly peaceful pro-democracy protests in Myanmar were violent, that the Western media was trying to cover up the violence for as long as possible, but that eventually the fact that they were armed with war weapons and carrying out a campaign of terrorism against not only the police and the military, but also the civilian population, just as was done in Libya and Syria from 2011 onward, uh, that the Western media would have no choice but to begin admitting that. And that day has now come, and I want to point people's attention towards this Reuters article from June 2nd, 2021. Boycott and bombings mar Myanmar's new school year. And it's not Myanmar's military carrying out the bombings, it's the supposedly peaceful pro-democracy protesters. And it even says so in the Reuters article. And here we have a picture of armed police officers outside of the school protecting it because the opposition has been carrying out violent attacks on schools. No more than a quarter of Myanmar's more than 12 million pupils enrolled for the new school year amid a protest boycott against military rule and in the wake of a series of bombings, an official of a teacher's group said. And I'm pretty sure that it's these bombings and shootings that have caused uh, most people to want to avoid the schools, not their participation in this protest. As a matter of fact, Reuters admits that 125,000 teachers from a total of more than 430,000 have been suspended for joining a civil disobedience movement. This isn't even half of this number. It's a minority. And in order to get people to go along with the civil disobedience movement because they don't want to, they're using terrorism. They're carrying out violent attacks, not just against police and military, but against civilian targets, including schools. It says here, security forces stood guard at some schools and brought pupils under armed escort from their homes. Why would they have to do that if the opposition wasn't trying to target and attack these people, students who want to go to school, just for opting out of their civil disobedience movement? This is the pro-democracy movement the West is backing right now in Myanmar. This is what they're doing to the people there. Teachers were also afraid. Some teachers go to school in normal clothing and change into their uniforms only inside the school. This is the climate of fear these so-called pro-democracy protesters have created with their campaign of deliberate terrorism. And Reuters talks about bombings near schools, and then they admit down here, between May 1st and May 26th, there were 115 bombings or bombing attempts and 18 arson attacks at educational establishment. And then they claim that the National Unity Government, this fake parallel government backed by the U.S., uh, whose members have all benefited from U.S. government funding over many years, they claim that they're going to create some sort of mobile education project, whatever that even means, to compensate for the fact that they're carrying out this terrorist campaign to shut down Myanmar's schools. And you ask yourself, where is Human Rights Watch and Amnesty International? Why aren't they speaking up about Myanmar's opposition carrying out a deliberate campaign of armed terrorism against schools, against teachers, against students, just for opting out of the civil disobedience movement? Where are they? And isn't this just another indication of, of how they simply hide behind human rights advocacy to only promote Western foreign policy, which at the moment is to get these terrorists into power in Myanmar. And if you think that I'm exaggerating that uh, they will kill you if, you if you dare defy them and their movement, if you're not part of their movement, you're against them and they will kill you, just look at these headlines. And, and this is from Myanmar Now. This is a US government funded media platform in Myanmar. It is pro-opposition. And these are the headlines that they, they have in their newspaper. Police sub-inspector dies after guerrilla attack. USDP member and former local administrator shot and killed. As spat of killings continues, anti-junta forces warn of more to come. And if we come down here, one of the most recent attacks came on Tuesday afternoon when a lone gunman shot at two soldiers stationed outside the number 32 basic education high school in Mandalay, killing one and injuring the other. They are carrying out armed attacks on schools. They have to put armed guards there to protect the schools. Unlike many such incidents, this one could be attributed to a particular group, the Mandalay People's Defense Force. So uh, the peaceful protesters very quickly transformed into these People's Defense Forces 
with war weapons and, and professional military training suddenly, like overnight. Uh, and they said it's part of a nationwide network of local civilian resistance forces that aims to coalesce into a federal army. He also claimed responsibility for a recent series of small explosions in five townships. Was one of those bombings at a school? Because his group just shot at a school. We don't want people to go to crowded places such as the electricity office or the courts. He warned. So this is him telling ordinary people, you cannot go about your daily business. If you go to any public uh, office or building, you're likely to get shot because we're going to be attacking all of these civilian targets. And then there's some more headlines. Ward administrator killed, three village administrators killed as attacks on junta officials continue. So it's, it's very obvious that uh, there, there were never peaceful protests from the beginning. They have evolved into this very nasty terrorism, attacking schools, threatening teachers, and even students just for not getting on board with their protest. So I thought it was important to show people what's going on in Myanmar, kind of give an update about the situation there. And also, I had a lot of people come out and criticize my coverage of Myanmar, saying that, no, they're not the same ones killing the Rohingya. This is a peaceful protest. They're not armed. It's not the same as Libya and Syria. And, and now we can see even the opposition media is admitting that, yes, they're armed. Yes, they're carrying out terrorism. They're not just attacking military and police targets. They're also killing politicians. They have death squads out on the streets, attacking their political opponents, attacking schools, terrorizing teachers and students, trying to stop people from getting an education. This is not a pro-democracy movement. This is another US-sponsored dirty war in yet another country. I warned people back in March that it was going to be exactly like Libya and Syria, and now we see it unfolding. The Western media is never going to tell you this, and if you're waiting for them to tell you the truth, you will always be months behind of what's actually really happening. So um, please help spread the word, help get this information out to more people. Uh, if you thought this video was useful, please like it and share it. Think about subscribing, it's free to do and it helps the channel grow. Check the video description for all of these links that I just talked about, as well as for ways to help support my work, like by becoming a Patreon member where you can help support my work month to month I'll give you some extra content. And also there are these channels of communication where we can all kind of build a community around this work. And as always, thank you so much for watching.